Uh, welcome back. Uh, today's topic is game theory review. Uh, before we get started, uh, I just uh, want to ask uh, whether you have done the homework. Uh, there was homework, which is to go over the materials about constraint optimization and probability theory. Uh, I cannot check whether you actually have done it. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to try to do it. Uh, there is asymmetric information problem between you and me, so we cannot buy the contract which is based on your uh, deed. But the uh, I hope you have done it. You have you have uh, go over. You have gone over the materials about this math. Uh, and I if you haven't done it, uh, I hope you you will do it uh, soon. Uh, again, this is game theory review, but I just want to emphasize that this cannot replace a proper uh, game theory course. Uh, this is just brief uh, sort of introduction to game theory uh, or review. Uh, here I'm going to focus on concepts and ideas and uh, the goal of this lecture is to refresh your memory. So uh, I'm going to assume that you have taken game theory course and th this is just to refresh your memory. Okay, so what is it? What is it? What is game theory? Uh, as you know, uh, the name can be misleading. Uh, it's not about games. It's not a theory, but it's still called game theory. So it's not about games like video game or board games. Although we can use game theory to understand such games, uh, but it's it's not exclusively about video games or board games. Uh, it's not a theory like theories in natural science and social sciences, uh, but still we call it theory. Uh, it is a mathematical theory, like set theory. So uh, it means that it's more like language. It's, it's not like uh, natural science uh, theory, but it's more like language. Or like, you know, you know if, if you are familiar with computer language, uh, you have probably uh, heard of uh, something like Python or C or Java, uh, such computer languages. So uh, game theory is like uh, lang uh, li like those languages. So it has vocabularies, commands, gra grammar. Uh, we have to interpret it. We we have to figure out the meaning of it, and we will use it to describe something, and. What do we want to describe? We want to describe uh, some situations uh, which we will call games. And games, uh, a game is like a situation where players' payoffs or players' utilities uh, depend not only on their own action but also uh, on the others. So, uh, as you can imagine, the, the definition of game is quite general and you can think of many uh, situations where players payoffs or utility depend on each other's action so uh, this is quite general and game theory provides uh, vocabularies and the ways of thinking uh, to understand these uh, situations so what exactly did I mean by understanding such situations so we have some situation where uh, everybody uh, plays against everybody and then uh, we want to figure out what uh, the outcome will look like right so we want to predict the outcome of a game predict the outcome of uh, strategic interactions so we, we, we want to uh, derive prediction from game from uh, a model so then we need to uh, figure out what the prediction is, you know, the definition, mathematical definition of prediction. And uh, to understand that, uh, we, I want to uh, talk about this solution concept. Uh, in many mathematical problems, we need a proper definition, definition of solution concepts. And the reason is this. So, for example, let's consider this problem, this equation. What is the solution of 2x plus 3y equals 10? 
um, the you may say that the answer is actually cross 5 minus 3 o y over 2 but uh, I'm not sure about that uh, it depends on the definition of the solution you know what what do I mean by uh, solution uh, we if we define the solution is like you know the solution looks like uh, x on the left hand side and all the others on the right hand side then uh, the solution will be like x equals 5 minus 3y over 2 so uh, what what did I mean by that uh, let's say I ask you to solve this equation for x then the correct answer is x equals 5 minus 3y over 2 but if I ask you to solve this equation for y then the answer will be different so we need we, we have to agree first uh, what the solution is we have to first define uh, what the solution is so it's not always clear uh, what the solution of a math mathematical problem is so we first need to define uh, what the solution is we, we first uh, come up first need to come up with a, a proper uh, reasonable or uh, plausible definition of uh, solution and in game theory a solution is called equilibrium so why do we talk about solution because we want to learn something from this modeling exercise so uh, we, we want to learn or we want to derive a prediction of the model so the prediction will be called solution and it will be called equilibrium so you know that the word equilibrium means some stability right so there there is balance and the situation is stable so there are not much changes uh, so and we will call it a solution or prediction of a model and the reason is this let's imagine some people play a game many many times over time they learn better strategies and if they figure out that strategy is better than uh, the previous strategy or the old strategy then they will adopt new strategy and what about the others? others observe the adoption of this new strategy and they will appropriately adapt to this newly employed strategy of others so everybody play against everybody so if some people change their strategy others will adapt to uh, the changes and they change their strategies in the way to improve their situations right they want to improve their payoffs yeah, they want to improve their utilities uh, and a long time long enough time has passed and what do you expect to observe and what you will observe in the long run is the prediction of the model uh, and we'll call it prediction and it's a, a and, and I, I want to claim that that prediction is reasonable because you know after uh, a long enough time of interaction uh, long enough time of adjustment of their strategies uh, eventually they will reach a point where nobody has incentive to change their action or strategy so that state that situation is stab stable and it will persist so we will observe such state or situation for long time so if we randomly pick time and observe the interaction of people then it is very likely to observe uh, the people are playing an equilibrium which means uh, the situation where everybody uh, uh, do their best does their best taking the other strategies as given so in this situation in equilibrium uh, no one has an incentive to change their strategy so the situation is stable so it doesn't change much it persists so you know 
we will observe such situation with very high probability. That's why we will call it a prediction of the model. So in the short run, there may be some changes like you know they they uh, they try to figure out what the better strategies are, and you know they change uh, you know people change their actions in response to others uh, changing actions, and it may be in in it may look like a chaos, and you know we cannot say much about chaos. We don't we don't know much about chaos. Uh, so instead, we want to focus on a situation where everything settles down. And if everything settles down, then it will, uh, the situation will last for a long time, so it's likely that we will observe such a situation. So that's why we, we call this situation, the, the stable, uh, settled down, uh, the settled situation, a prediction and mathematically uh, is the solution of game theory and in, in, in the language of game theory we will call it equilibrium so prediction is the solution of a game and we will call it an equilibrium so uh, that's the basic idea of games what, what game theory is about and uh, as I said before I, I'm gonna assume that you have taken a game theory course but just to refresh your memory, uh, let me go over a formal definition of a strategic game, a dynamic game, an extensive game, and uh, I'm going to discuss. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss a few few examples, uh, like prisoner's dilemma or wage contract games. So, uh, yeah, strategic game. Uh, it's also known as a static game with perfect information. It's the game uh, that we can. Uh, th th it's probably the simplest game that we can imagine uh, conceptually. Uh, of course, strategy game can be very complicated, but uh, conceptually, it is the uh, most. Uh, the it's, the it's, the it's the simplest uh, game. So, it's a static game. So. A as you can imagine, there is a dynamic. There are dynamic games, so dynamic games are usually more complicated. So static game is relatively less complicated, and y you know it, it's it's with the perfect information. We have we assume perfect information. So uh, also we can uh, think of situation where the information where, where information is imperfect. So uh, static game with perfect information is probably the simplest uh, game that we can imagine. So what is what is a strategic game? Strategic game is collection of these mathematical objects. So n is uh, a finite set of players. So there must be players, right? So the finite set of players, and a generic element of n is i. So i uh, is indexing uh, individual players. So and and what's next? Uh, actions. We need players. We need actions. We need payoff function. So uh, AI is a non-empty set of actions. So each player has some non-empty set of actions. They 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 can do. For example, player I can do this and that, and we need to define what they can do in a game that definition is in this uh, uh, set AI. UI is a payoff function. Uh, it's a mapping from Cartesian product of AJs uh, to uh, real space, uh, real number. So it assigns a uh, set of real numbers, so it assigns a, 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 a tuple of actions or, or factor of actions to a real number and for, for each player so collection of all these uh, set of players, set of actions uh, set of payer functions so collection of these uh, collectively defines a strategy game 
So if there are players, actions, and pair functions, then we can say that, okay, this is a proper definition of a game. Of course, uh, later we need more elements uh, to define games. We need more vocabularies uh, to define a game. But uh, for now, this is enough. Uh, let's look at this example, two-player prisoner's dilemma game. So in two-player prisoner's dilemma game, uh, as the name suggests, uh, there are two players, so set of players uh, n is set of uh, set with element one and two. So there are two players, player one and player two. And for each player, there is set of actions. So there are two possible choices. Uh, one is C, the other is D. C stands for confess. D stands for deny. So these prisoners uh, who are uh, rightly uh, uh, suspected as uh, as, vic as as the criminals, uh, they uh, they are arrested. They are in different rooms, and they can either confess their crime or they can deny. So each player, each prisoner. Uh, can confess or deny. So there are two uh, actions available. And utility function or payoff function is a mapping from a set of vector of actions to a real space. So in this example, there are uh, so the vector of action looks like this: CC or CD or DC or DD. These are the vector vector of actions or tuple of actions. And this payoff function connects each vector of actions to real number. So, for example, player one's utility function looks like this, and player one's utility given CC is one. So, if everybody confesses, then the utility of player one is one. And if the player one confesses, while the player 2 denies, then player 1's payoff is 3. So if I confess and you deny, then I get some uh, exemption. So my payoff will be higher. And, uh, you know, similarly, in, in you know, the utility function assigns uh, other uh, action vectors to real numbers, like, you know, if I choose D and uh, the other player choose C, then my payoff is zero. If both player denies, then the payoff is two. So this is complete description of a game. So two-player Princeton dilemma is the probably the uh, one of the simplest game, and at the same time, uh, it is one of the uh, most well-known uh, game uh, in the world, too. Um, yeah, so this is strategy game. And we need solution concept, right? So we need solution concept uh, to make a prediction. So we describe the situation, and from this situation, we want to make a prediction. So in, in such and such situation, this and that will happen. That's what we want to uh, do. For that, we need solution concept and the, uh, the most popular, most uh, well-known uh, solution concept is Nash equilibrium. Uh, it is named after John Forbes Nash, uh, popularly known as the beautiful mind. Uh, probably you have uh, watched the movie uh, uh, start by Russell Crowe, right? And yeah, so that's Nash equilibrium. Uh, it's really popular and it's quite intuitive. Everybody likes this idea of Nash equilibrium. And uh, John Forbes Nash is a genius. He uh, wrote an article, or he wrote an academic paper uh, which proposed this idea, Nash equilibrium, uh, in 1950, 
and he won when 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 he wrote that paper he was like twenty three early twenties and he won Nobel Prize for that contribution uh long time uh, long time after that like in nineteen ninety four so what is Nash equilibrium here is the definition a Nash equilibrium is this so a tuple of actions or vector of actions uh will will in uh, will will uh, denote this Nash equilibrium using star as asterisk star so a one star to a n star so this tuple of actions vector of actions is a Nash equilibrium if for all i for all players u i the utility of playing this Nash, Nash equilibrium action is greater than or equal to u i uh, utility of player i playing something else so uh, notice that all the other players actions are fixed so all the other players are playing the Nash equilibrium action so a1 star to a n star so all the other players are playing the Nash equilibrium action and we want to change the action of player i only so uh, on the left hand side uh, ai is with asterisk so it's ai star so it's Nash equilibrium action and on the right hand side we don't have asterisk so just ai and for all ai so uh, some other action what this means is given the others uh, player given the other players uh, actions which is given by this Nash equilibrium action uh, player I cannot be better off by changing uh, his or her action so the player I has no reason to change his or her action so you know and this is true for everybody you know, I this for everybody for, for, for all i then we call such a situation a Nash equilibrium so this is the definition of Nash equilibrium and it's really simple but uh, John Pope's Nash Jr. won Nobel Prize for the uh, contribution for for this contribution for suggesting for proposing uh this definition and also uh he also uh proved that the Nash equilibrium exists for a very large set of games so that's also contribution so what is the meaning of this the meaning is this given the other section uh this is important given the other section my action is optimal or you can say the same thing in different language using different language so my action is the best response if you have ta if, if you have taken a game theory course probably you have heard of this uh, term best response uh, as the name suggests is the risk is the best one among all possible responses to others uh, action or strategies so my action is the best response to other section and my action makes my action maximizes my payoff or utility so uh, in Nash equilibrium everybody is maximizing their payoff everybody is maximizing their utility given the other section so they take their uh, the other section as granted and they 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 uh, maximize their payoff everybody does that so you know that's the situation uh, where nobody has an incentive to move so uh, everybody maximize their payoff everybody's action is optimal given the other section and it's the same is true for everybody else then we say that situation is Nash equilibrium so no one has an incentive to deviate from equilibrium uh, so this is the definition of Nash equilibrium and meaning of Nash equilibrium and if you are not familiar with uh, math uh, then 
this definition of Nash equilibrium may look a bit uh, hard to understand, then uh, I recommend you to remember this mantra. So in, in every class uh, where I use game theory, I review game theory and I uh, talk about this mantra. So this is uh, something you may want to remember and you you can use it whenever possible uh, so mantra goes like this no one has an incentive to deviate from Nash equilibrium no one has an incentive to deviate from Nash equilibrium in Nash equilibrium no one has an incentive to deviate so uh, in in exams when, when you take exams or when you solve a game theory problem and sometimes you uh, you get stuck so you don't know how to solve a problem then uh, it's a nice idea to go back to the definition of Nash equilibrium and you know and you try to remember what the Nash equilibrium is and you don't remember then you just remember this uh, mantra you just chant this mantra like like you know uh, Buddhist monk in in Tibet, you know they they chant mantra like uh, whatever whatever. I, I I don't I don't know those those mantra, but in, you know in in uh, game theory uh, the mantra goes like this: No one has an incentive to deviate in Nash equilibrium. So just rem remember this, uh, and then it will show a way to the solution. So uh, you know often. Uh, oftentimes, we don't have uh, in, in in game theory uh, the deriving Nash equilibrium. The finding Nash equilibrium is not straightforward. Sometimes we have to make a guess, and then later we verify uh, that that is indeed a Nash equilibrium. Uh, to do that, you have to make a good guess. You you have to make a nice guess, and then later to verify that that is a Nash equilibrium you just uh, need to remember this no one has an incentive to deviate from Nash equilibrium so you check whether there is an incentive to deviate from Nash equilibrium and if there is no one who has a profitable deviation strategy then we can say that okay this is a Nash equilibrium alright so uh, Nash equilibrium is uh, a situation where everybody uh, does their best given the other's action so no one has an incentive to deviate from it all right so let's look at uh, this example wage contract game uh, I made up this game uh, because it's a bit similar to what you're gonna uh, discuss later uh, so but it's, it's much simpl uh, much 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 simplified so it's two by two game so there are two players and uh, each player has uh, a set of two actions so uh, the one player is called employer and the other player is called employee so the employer can either offer high wage or low wage and the employee can either accept the offer or reject the offer so depending on their actions the outcome will be determined uh, outcome and payoffs will be determined and payoffs can be uh, written can, can be represented uh, sorry can be, re can, can be represented in this way in this 2x2 two two, uh, matrix so uh, it, it, uh, we can read it like this so if the employer uh, offers high wage and if the employee accepts it then uh, WH high wage will be given to the employee and R minus WH will be enjoyed by the employer so here R uh, stands for revenue so the employer hires a worker and worker uh, works and they the, the worker produce something and uh, the revenue is generated and the the employer will pay the wage and the rest will be uh, kept by the uh, employer so 
R minus W is the revenue minus cost, so it, it, is, it is appropriate. So the employer's payoff is a profit, which is R minus WH. If the offered wage is low wage, and if it is accepted, then the payoffs will be like this. So the worker or the employee will get WL, and the uh, employer will get R minus WL. So R minus WL is the profit in this case. If the worker rejects the offer, then uh, the worker will get U on the bar and the employer will get zero. And you know, the same is true uh, in the case where a low wage is offered. So what is this U on the bar? U on the bar is something we call uh, reservation utility or reservation payoff, or reser reservation wage. So the meaning of it is this. So let's imagine you're a worker and you are negotiating uh, over your wage. Uh, and let's say you reject the offer. You don't like the offer, so you reject it. And you walk away. And it's not the end of the world. It's not end your end of your life. You need to find a new job. So you go to labor market, uh, you may spend some time in the labor market searching for a new job and maybe if you're lucky you get a job and you will be paid. This U on the bar uh, summarizes everything like this. So the cost that uh, you have to bear in the searching process and the benefit like you know the, the, the new wage in the new job so everything happens in the future is captured by this U on the bar. So U on the bar is called reservation wage because it's the minimum wage that the worker demands. You know, the the wage must be higher than higher than this U on the bar. Otherwise the worker will reject the offer because you know the worker has a better option outside. So this reservation wage is also called uh, uh, outside option value, the value of outside option. So the value of outside option is U on the bar, so the worker can walk away anytime if the uh, wage is below U on the bar. And the employer needs to understand that. So to be concrete, uh, to uh, derive a prediction of this model. Uh, let's put some numbers in these uh, W's and U's and W's and U and R. So let's say WH is five, so high wage is five, and WL low wage is one, and U on the bar is two, and R the revenue is ten. And then yeah, so what then? Why why is the equilibrium? Uh, we find the equilibrium in this way. So we compare, so we, we fix uh, one player's action and we compare the payoff of the other player. So let's say we fix the employer's action to at, at high wage. So let's, uh, ass let's assume the employer uh, offers a high wage. And let's compare the employee's uh, payoff uh, in case where the employee accepts the offer and in case where the employee rejects the offer. So if the employer, sorry, em employee accepts the offer, then the, uh, the payoff or the utility is WH, which is 5. If the employee rejects the offer, then the payoff is U on the bar, which is 2. 5 is greater than 2, so if high wage is offered, then the uh, employee will accept it, right? So if high wage is offered, then the employee will be uh, accepting the offer. You can do the same thing uh, in case where low wage is offered. Uh, we compare WL uh, with U on the bar. WL is 1, U on the bar is 2. 2 is greater than 1. So if low wage is offered, 
then the worker will reject it, right? So if high wage is offered, then worker will accept it, and if low wage is offered, then worker will reject it. Okay, so let's move on to the employer strategy. So let's assume the worker accepts the offer. The worker accepts the offer, and we compare the payoffs of the uh, employee, sorry, payoffs of employer uh, in uh, two different situations. So if high wage is offered, if the, the employer offers high wage, then the employer's payoff is R minus WH, which is 10 minus 5 equals 5. So if the employer offers high wage, then the payoff is 5. If the employer offers low wage, on the other end, R minus WL is 10 minus 1 equals 9. 9 is greater than 5, so uh, if the worker accepts the offer, then employer will offer a low wage, right? So if the worker accepts the offer, then I the employer will uh, offer a low wage. Um, what about rejection case? So if the worker rejects the offer, then the uh, the the employ the employer is indifferent between the two actions, right? So whatever the employer does, uh, the payoff is always zero. So if the worker rejects the offer, then payoff will be zero. So then, what what's the conclusion? What's the prediction of this model? In Nash equilibrium, nobody has an incentive to deviate. So it turns out that low wage and rejection is a Nash equilibrium, right? So uh, let's say low wage is offered, then and the worker is rejecting the offer, then the worker has no incentive to change the action, right? So if, if low wage is offered and the worker is now rejecting the offer, if the worker accepts the offer, low wage, then the worker's payoff will drop from 2 to 1. So U on the bar is 2, WL is 1, right? So the, the, the worker's payoff will uh, decrease by changing the action. So the worker has no incentive to change the action from rejection. So reject is is optimal given the work given the employer's uh, uh, action low. Right? Given the employer's action, the worker has no incentive to change the action. What about the employer? The same. So given rejection, so the worker's action is given by rejection, the employer has no reason to change the action. Whatever the employer does, the payoff is always zero. So the employer just keep uh, offering low wage. No, don't, there is no reason to uh, change the action. So in Nash equilibrium, no one has an incentive to deviate, and low and rejection is such a situation, so it's a Nash equilibrium. All right. But uh, as you might notice, uh, this prediction is weird, and this game is weird. Uh, this looks weird because you know, probably if high wage is offered, then the worker will accept it, and everybody will be happier. But that doesn't happen. The reason is there is there is a problem uh, in representing. Uh, the situation. Uh, there, there is a problem in modeling the situation. Uh, the problem is uh, the worker's action is unconditional. Uh, in other words, 
conditional action or conditional response was not allowed in this game. So in, in, in the situation that you imagine, the worker's action is conditional, which means if high wages offered, uh, the worker accepts the offer. If low wages offered, then the worker uh, does not accept the offer. Uh, so that's a conditional strategy, conditional action, right? Condition, conditional on the employer's action, uh, the worker changed their action, the work his or her action. Uh, but we m we we don't want to uh, uh, allow such conditional action for employer. In the situation that we imagine, we some some the situation that we have in mind. The work the employer makes an offer first, and observing that offer, and the worker decides whether to accept it or not. So the worker's action is conditional on the employer's action, but the employer's action doesn't have to be uh, conditional. So to incorporate this idea, we need to enrich or in extend the uh, game to a, an extensive game is also called dynamic game uh, so yeah we are gonna talk about extensive game uh, maybe this is a good time to pause uh, if you want to go to bathroom uh, or take a rest then probably this is a good time uh, if you are okay then let's move on so extensive game, it's also called a uh, dynamic game with perfect information. So uh, we still uh, keep this assumption of perfect information, but we want to allow a uh, richer dynamics, richer interaction uh, among players. So uh, by allowing this dynamic interaction, we allow a conditional responses or conditional strategies. So strategy becomes more complicated. Previously there was just actions, right? So I confess or I deny or I accept or I reject. So the those actions were quite simple. But now we will have to consider more complicated strategies. So uh yeah let's uh move on. So uh, still we need players, so n is a finite set of players uh, with generic element i and h is a set of histories. So because it's a dynamic game, uh, the, the, the actions or events uh, takes place uh, over time. So we can think of histories, we, we have to define histories. So what is a history? Here, a history h is a sequence of taken actions. So it's a sequence of what has happened. Uh, so that's a, that's a history. And H is set of all histories, all possible histories. You know, the histories that may not be realized. But if it is logically possible, then it is in set H. So H is set of all possible histories. And P is a player function. Uh, a player function assigns a history to a player set. So, so, so it, it matches a history to a player. So it shows who is going to move after history H. So history H uh, has happened and then whose turn? Right? So after history H there is someone who is making a move and this player function uh, shows who is the one uh, to make a move. So that's a his uh, player function. And AI is now a function of H. So it's a set of actions of player I after H history. So after history H, if player I is the one who is about to move, uh, who is uh, who is take who is to take an action, 
then this AI of age uh, shows what kind of action, what 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 sort, what what which actions are available at that moment. And set is a set of terminal nodes, uh, or a set of outcomes, or sort of set of uh, finalized histories. Uh, and UI uh, matches each terminal nodes to a real number. So it's a payoff function. So after uh, all these interactions, payoff will be realized. So at the end, so this uh, set of terminal nodes, uh, set, set of outcomes uh, defines what is the final state. You know, I play this, you play that, and after these dynamic interactions, there is no more action left to taken, and then, you know, at that moment, the payoff will be realized. So, in each uh, different uh, final situation, the different payoffs of for different players will be defined by this payoff function. So, as you can see, uh, there are there are more elements in this dynamic game than the static game, and probably is a bit more uh, difficult to understand. So uh, let's look at an example. So let's look at this uh, simple dynamic game. So dynamic game can be represented by this a game tree, and this game tree the uh, exactly shows the structure of the game and you know we can correspond so the each each element of this game tree correspond to the definition uh, that we just uh, uh, saw in in previous slide so uh, you know we first need to consider history okay history after null history after null history player 1 moves. So what does that mean? So even the starting point is a history. No action has taken yet, but still it's a history. So null hist we'll call it null history. So the starting point. The starting point, uh, at the starting point, player 1 moves. Right? So look at this uh, game tree. So at the starting point, uh, player 1 moves. So the player can choose either out or in. right? So there are two available actions, out or in. And after history in, player 2 moves. right? After history in, player 2 moves. And there are three terminal nodes, Z1, Z2, Z3. Terminal node Z1 corresponds to history out. Terminal node Z2 corresponds to history in and left. And terminal node Z3 corresponds to history in and right. So there are three possible uh, final state or final situation. And in each terminal node, uh, the, the, the payoffs will be assigned. Okay, so this is an extensive game. So in extensive game, uh, we also uh, can define a, a, a Nash equilibrium. So as you can see, uh, this definition of Nash equilibrium looks almost same to the definition that we saw before, right? So a tuple of strategies, uh, S1 to Sn, is a Nash equilibrium if for all i for everybody uh, u i uh, s stars is greater than u i uh, s i and everybody else plays s stars. Uh, so what this means is this player i is maximizing his or her payoff uh, or this SI star is the optimal strategy or the best response 
given the other strategies. So meaning is pretty much same. The the uh, the the formula, the the inequality looks uh, exactly same, but the only difference is. Let's go back to the ex action. So okay, the only difference uh, is here we use the the vocabulary, the term, the word action, and we use a to uh, uh, denote action of players. Here we use a different term called strategy um, and we use S uh, to denote uh, strategies of players. Uh, okay, what is strategy? A strategy is not exactly action uh, but it's more like plan. So a strategy is a complete action plan for all possible histories. So for all possible histories, I can have a plan. So even in situation where, uh, even in situation uh, which is not realized, uh, I can have a plan. So for example, I will. Uh, I'll do nothing uh, if the stock price increase uh, tomorrow uh, then and let's say the stock price actually decreases and then the, the, the world that in which the stock price increases is not realized but still I can have a plan I can have a, a I can I can make a uh, yeah, yeah. I can think of what what I will do in the situation uh, which is not realized. And strat strategy is a complete description of such plan. So it's it's more uh, complicated than action. It's more uh, the dimension of strategy is larger than uh, the dimension of action. It's more complicated. It is conditional. It's uh, you know, like in language, a statement can be or or or, or uh, proposition can be more complicated by uh, adding conditions. So uh, strategy is a complete action. Uh, so in dynamic game we are talking about strategies instead of actions so other than that the definition of Nash equilibrium is exactly the same as before so uh, the Nash equilibrium uh, is uh, the meaning of this uh, meaning, meaning, meaning of Nash equilibrium is this so given the other's plan I don't have an incentive to change my plan and the same is true for everybody uh, for, for all the others then uh, we are in a Nash equilibrium. So the meaning, interpretation, definition, everything is same, except we are talking about strategies instead of uh, actions. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to this wage contract uh, game. We enrich this game by allowing uh, conditional strategies we make the game more dynamic so in the first stage uh, employer makes an offer the wage is either high or low right so the the employer's uh, first action is either high or low and in each each situation so let's say the employers uh, the employer offers high wage and employer employ sorry employee uh, decides whether to accept it or reject it and you know even if employee accepts a high wage offer uh, the employee can reject a low wage offer so employee can choose different action in different situation 
but that was not allowed in in the previous game right so in 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 this uh simple game uh in two by two game in static strategy game uh the employee could choose either accept or reject right so if the worker accepts the offer that means the worker accepts any offer high or low any offer if the worker rejects the offer that means the worker rejects all the offers any offer high or low so this is quite restrictive right so we basically uh, making an assumption that the worker uh, needs to accept any offer or no offer so we impose such restriction in the model then we have this uh, uh, oversimplified uh, model and we relaxed that assumption and we allow uh, the worker to take different action uh, in different situation then we have this game right so the employee can choose different action in different situation so uh, employer offer high wage and employee accepts and employer offers low wage the employee rejects it that is possible right and uh, here we have two Nash equilibria uh, one is this the employer offers high wage and employee accepts high wage and reject low wage so uh, the Nash equilibrium can be written like this high uh, comma uh, open parenthesis accept reject uh, close parenthesis this is a Nash equilibrium right so as you can see now the uh, the employees strategy is two-dimensional so the first element of this employee strategy is the employees action employees action in the first node when the offered wage is high if offered wage is high then employee accepts it the second element of employee's strategy is the employee's action uh, when the offered wage is low so in each situation uh, employee can choose different actions so the dimension of this uh, strategy is two previously we allow just one dimensional action either accept or reject uh, but now we allow uh, more complicated uh, strategies okay so this is a Nash equilibrium how do you know whether this is a, uh, how, how, how can you be sure uh, that this is a Nash equilibrium we need to check whether there is a profitable deviation strategy uh, to anybody so employer employer has no incentive to change the action from high to low because if the employer employer changed the action high to low then employer uh, employers employers pay up will uh, drop from five to zero and given the employers uh, strategy given the employers action employee has no reason to change the action because uh, for example uh, if if the employee change the first element of the strategy so which means the employee change the action uh, from accept to reject then the employees uh, payoff will drop from 5 to 2 uh, so th the employee will not employee will not change the action and also uh, employee has no reason to change the action in the uh, second situation in the second situation if the employee change the action from reject to accept the payoff will drop from 2 to 1 so the employee will be worse off so employee 
will not change the action. So given the other section, no one has an incentive to deviate from the, uh, uh, the this designated uh, strategy. So uh, it's a Nash equilibrium. But there is another Nash equilibrium which is uh, less plausible. Let's look at this. So in this Nash equilibrium, employer offers low wage and employee rejects the offer no matter what. So this is a Nash equilibrium because no one has an incentive to deviate from this. Uh, you can check it by yourself. And but still, uh, we uh, we think that this is something something is wrong in this equilibrium, right? So uh, the first one is a bit reasonable. So the employer offers high wage, the employee accepts it, so everybody happy. But in this equilibrium something is wrong so employer offers low wage employee rejects it um, and not you know neither of them uh, is happy so what's wrong with it uh, it's a Nash equilibrium but it's not a sub game perfect Nash equilibrium so what is sub game perfect Nash equilibrium uh, it's a this this is an informal definition uh, of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium because uh, to formally define subgame perfect Nash equilibrium we need to define what subgame is and to we we need a bunch of uh, new notations I don't want to do that so uh, just let's uh, be l let's just uh, be satisfied uh, satisfied by this uh, informal definition. So subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is this. So a tuple of strategies, uh, S1 double star to S S S S N double star, is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium if it constitutes a Nash equilibrium in all subgames. Okay. So a part of these strategies, right? Th these strategies are complete action plans. So uh, they are plans. So uh, they describe uh, the actions should be taken in each contingencies. So uh, in each each contingencies, uh, if you if you uh, scrutinize scrutinize it, you figure out that each in each contingency, this strategy uh, is a Nash equilibrium. So uh, what is a subgame? A subgame is a game after history so after whatever history all possible histories so in after whatever history there is a game if, if there is a game then we will call it a sub game so there can be many many sub game I even in very simple uh, game uh, but uh, in a sub game perfect in, in, in a sub game perfect Nash equilibrium uh, the in every uh, sub game the, the 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 strategy is a Nash equilibrium. Meaning is, in any moment in of action, in any moment uh, of action, in in any contingency, uh, one's decision must be optimal. Uh, also, the others expect this. So, when you make a decision, uh, you uh, make a prediction about the other section, and. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, you expect that the others will choose their optimal action. So, uh, and and you uh, you when you, when you make an action when, when when you take an action you take that into account. And uh, you know, this is a definition of subgame so perfect Nash equilibrium, and from this we can see that uh, this low reject reject is not a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium right so this low reject reject is not a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium because after history high so employer offers high wage so in the contingency uh, that employer offers high wage employees uh, action is not optimal right so 
look at this uh, yellow painted uh, rectangular employee. Uh, at that point, in, 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 in that moment, if employee uh, choose accept, then employee's payoff is 5. If employee uh, chooses reject, then employee's uh, payoff is 2. But impl this employee chooses uh, to reject it, reject the offer, high wage offer. And this is not optimal. So this, this is not Nash equilibrium. So in the sub game, uh, after history high, after history high, there is a sub game. So in that sub game, this reject does not constitute a Nash equilibrium. It's not a Nash equilibrium. So uh, this low reject reject is not a sub game perfect Nash equilibrium because in sub game perfect Nash equilibrium, in any contingency, everybody's uh, decision is optimal. Every uh, uh, sub game, uh, so so they they they, they constitute these these tuple of strategies constitute a Nash equilibrium in any sub game. All right, so uh, we introduce a new concept of game perfect Nash equilibrium because the Nash equilibrium, the solution Nash equilibrium as a solution concept, is not always very useful. We need to refine the solution concept. So, uh, in especially uh, in the in, in dynamic games, uh, Nash equilibrium is uh, too broad. So there are too many Nash equilibria, and many of them are not reasonable. So we want to focus on more reasonable uh, predictions, and uh, for that we need a refinement. The refined solution concept is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. All right. Uh, as I said before, I want to focus on the key ideas. I, this is not a game theory course, so I just want to. Uh, uh, intuitive understanding of games. Uh, so let's focus on these ideas. So these solution concepts, Nash equilibrium and subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, are they realistic? And uh, some of some of you um, might find it realistic enough. Uh, some of you uh, might not. So they are not really realistic. Uh, in the sense that uh, the reality is, is much more complicated and in reality uh, people do not maximize their pay if they, they do not uh, solve mathematical problems they just do uh, what they want to do right so and more often than not their actions their strategies are not perfect and especially in dynamic games uh, dynamic games are usually very complicated so the players or the participants of game, uh, they uh, fail to predict the actions of others. So the predictions are imperfect and the expectations uh, diverge from the reality. So maybe these concepts are too strong, right? These solution concepts are not realistic in the sense that it requires too strong uh, rationality of uh, players. But still, uh, they capture very critical ideas uh, and we don't want to lose these ideas. And, uh, and these if, if you agree to these ideas and at the same time, if you want to uh, uh, have, an, have, have models uh, which capture these ideas well, then you may agree that the 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 the, the uh, formalization uh, that we saw before the, the solution concepts and everything are uh, uh, probably it's not ideal but still they are uh, uh, one of the best uh, that we can have. So what are these ideas? these critical ideas. So idea one, people try to improve their situations. 
but have limited influences on others. So they have to uh, take the other's actions or strategies have as given. Right? So you know you may want to uh earn lots of money to earn lots of money maybe uh all all the other people uh just give you money. Does that make sense? Does that doesn't make sense, right? So uh you have limited influence on others. All the others uh try to uh improve their situation right so you wish that all the others work for you but that's not reality that that doesn't happen you just what you what you can do is you just uh try to improve your situation taking the others uh behavior the other strategy as given so that's idea number 1 this idea is captured in the solution concept of Nash equilibrium. So the Nash equilibrium is more strict in the sense that uh, it's math, so it's too sharp. Uh, in reality, people are not that much sharp. People are not completely rational. Uh, people are not uh, utility maximizers. But still, uh, it captures the I, I think it uh, captures the direction right the second idea uh, when making a decision people take into account others responses so this is uh, the idea captured in subgame perfect Nash equilibrium when you make a decision you make a prediction so you make an expectation you form an expectation about others' responses. When you say something, you expect that, okay, if I say this, then maybe uh, my friend will be offended or my friend will be happy. So you think about the, the others' responses. And when you make a decision, when you, when you say something, uh, you take that into account. So uh, this idea is not in the solution concept of Nash equilibrium, but in uh, the idea in, in in the concept of uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So these two ideas are reasonable, I think, uh, and and uh, very critical in any social interactions. So we want to incorporate these ideas in our model, and uh, one of the easiest, simplest and probably one of the most beautiful way to uh, incorporate these ideas is to uh, to uh, adopt a solution concept something like solution concepts like uh, uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium so it's not the best it's, it's not ideal it's not uh, perfect but still uh, is it's very nice uh, we want to use those solution concepts okay so here is the reason why I go over all these uh, we are going to use backward induction okay so uh, we are going to consider dynamic games so we are going to use backward induction and uh, there are people who are not really familiar with game theory and uh, and whenever I use uh, backward induction they don't understand why do we do that so we I, I, I went over all these solution concepts and everything uh, because I want to say that uh, we are going to use backward induction okay so to say that I went over all this so, uh, how do we find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? Uh, we need to figure out a Nash equilibrium for all subgames, right? To find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we need to uh, find the Nash equilibrium for all subgames. Thus, uh, 
we want to start from the smallest sub game and then we find the uh, the, the, the Nash equilibrium for larger sub games which means we start from the very last stage of the dyna of a dynamic game and move, we move backward and this uh, this this, this uh, way of solving a uh, problem is called backward induction so we start from the very last stage of a game and then we move backward so that's how we uh, find the sub game perfect Nash equilibrium Okay, uh, here is a problem. We want to use sub game perfect Nash equilibrium, but it's not enough because the games that we will consider are uh, games with imperfect information. Uh, in contract theory, we consider a situation where uh, there is asymmetric information problem, like moral hazard, adverse selection. So uh, we need different solution concept and uh, those concepts are called sequential equilibrium or perfect Bayesian equilibrium these are solution concepts uh, 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 proposed for the uh, proposed as a solution concept for dynamic game with imperfect information so what you're going to use as solution concept is a sequential equilibrium but uh, I don't want to do that now I don't, I don't want to introduce uh, what sequential equilibrium is now it's a bit complicated uh, uh, but later I, I'm gonna talk about it uh, but for now uh, I just want you to remember this you just need to know two things we'll use backward induction because uh, in dynamic games to uh, derive a reasonable prediction uh, we need to uh, use backward induction that's number one number two whenever appropriate we consider expected utility so whenever there is uncertainty and you know whenever there is uh, something that a player does not know then that player will try to maximize the expected utility instead of uh, simple utility okay so these two are uh, everything that you need to know you need to remember for now okay uh, so I in, in this lecture I introduced the two key concepts uh, two key uh, ideas uh, we got we are going to use Nash equilibrium and sub game perfect Nash equilibrium and each uh, solution concepts uh, captures some really fundamental ideas the really important key ideas they are uh, uh, these two ideas idea number one people try to improve their situations but they have limited influences on others and idea number two uh, when making a decision people take into account others responses so uh, to incorporate these ideas we uh, first uh, idea zero we want to describe a situation where uh, everybody's uh, strategy uh, affects everybody's payoff so to describe such situ situation we need a language a formal language uh, which is called game theory and in game theory we want to incorporate these two ideas idea number one and idea number two uh, and these two ideas are uh, captured in uh, the solution concepts like Nash equilibrium and sub game perfect Nash equilibrium and uh, you're going to use something very similar to sub game perfect Nash equilibrium it is called sequential equilibrium it's very similar to sub game perfect Nash equilibrium but it is uh, this solution is general, en general enough to uh, allow imperfect information and whenever appropriate we are going to consider uh, expected utility